Hey folks, welcome again to the Knife Lab. <laughs> um, today we are talking about five different sharpening systems. This is a very commonly requested discussion point in lots of comments. Um, first of all, just for a bit of a disclaimer, I'm not an expert, I'm a hobbyist at best. I just do a lot of knife sharpening because I do a lot of knife testing. Um, so, you know, you can see my other videos where I test uh, edge retention of knives. That requires lots of edges to be put on knives and that sort of thing. So, I've got a lot of use with all of these different systems. So, five different systems, all very different. Um, the answer I probably can give in advance is that no, there is no perfect sharpening system for every knife guy because you know what? There's a lot of different kind of knife guys. That's the thing. Um, what I'm going to do is go through, these ones are all quite different and um, just let you know what the differences are, what each are best at, what each may be a weaker at and um, maybe you'll be able to use this video as a bit of reference to make a decision about if you want to get any of these systems or if you want to get a couple of them or just yeah, commit to one and try and make it work. So, And I think with most of these there is an opportunity to, to do that as well. You can probably get by with just one of these if you have you know, fairly basic needs. At any rate, so today we're looking at the Tormek T4 uh, fixed angle sharpening system. We're looking at the Lansky sharpening system which is another angled system. We're looking at the WorkSharp Basic Knife and Tool Sharpener, which is a um, convex uh, grinding belt system, so again, a powered system. We're looking at the KME Fixed Angled Knife Sharpening System, which is a, um, a fairly deluxe system, I suppose, um, costing you know upwards of a couple of hundred dollars, let's say, for a basic kit. And then we're looking at water stones, bench stones, that sort of thing, and um, espousing the uh, benefits and weaknesses of them and all the others. So stay tuned, let's uh, talk through all of them, starting with the Tormek. All right, so our first stop is the Tormek, Tormek Fixed Angle Sharpening System. Uh, this is the most expensive out of all of these. So the Tormek, for what I would say the basic knife sharpening outlay, probably about 750 Australian dollars for a T4. Uh, you're probably looking at 520 or so American, don't know. Um, this is a very versatile system and it is, uh, you can specialize it towards whatever you want to sharpen. Uh, it is very modular, you can buy lots of different things for it, which is again probably one of the uh, pricier um, yeah, affecting attributes of it. But um, yeah, if you're happy to spend a bit of cash, the Tormek can probably do everything you need uh, sharpened pretty much ever, as long as you're happy to buy a jig for it. So the Tormek is fixed angled by the virtue of this rail here and all the jigs having this flat spot here uh, to ride along the rail and keep the uh, evenness between the knife edge and the flat round stone. So any mistakes that happen are a result of probably human fallibility and accidental you know, knocks and, and jumps. So you turn on the Tormek, you see it moves at a pretty pretty low RPM, it's not a bench grinder for sure, like say you, you think of a more traditional um, power grinder and it would just absolutely burn the crap out of an edge straight away. This is quite slow and the cool thing about the Tormek is li literally it keeps the edge cool by having this reservoir of water that you keep topped up, keeps the stone clean and it also keeps the knife cool so you don't ruin the temper of them, which is really really good as well. Often powered systems you can bake your edges if you if you do it too much without waiting in between. So that's the best thing about the Tormek is probably the repeatability of it uh, and also the fact that it keeps your edges cool while you do it. It's also great because it does it pretty quickly. So the Tormek stone here on all but the most advanced steels is probably all you need. So what you have here is a basic 200 slash 1000 grit stone. It can be both because it comes with this device here which is a stone which has a 1000 grit side and a 200 grit side and you apply this to the wheel and after a couple of minutes it'll be the grit that you want it to be which is really really cool. Uh, the negatives of that is that it gradually erodes the stone away and it can sometimes unevenly do it as this becomes uneven and then you need to true your stone again which I'll get to in a second. But yes, very very cool and then the strop wheel on the side here which you can also use the rail on but I generally just use freehand. With the Tormek paste applied, it's a 3000 grit finish, which is getting towards a pretty decent polish. So yeah, um, things to know about the Tormek. Uh, the price is gonna be probably the biggest thing for most people, but apart from that, it is um, 
yeah, if you can imagine something, there's probably a Tormek jig for it to get it sharpened. So, um, and some of the jigs use the side of the stone, some of the jigs use the corner of the stone. It's really, really interesting how they apply this, you know, pretty basic little setup here. Um, the Tormek's a round stone though. So, if you are thinking of redoing a Scandi edge and you aren't happy with it having a slight uh, convex, then this may not be the tool for you. So, the edges, if you're trying to, or even if you're a knife maker, and you're trying to do complete flat grinds, like, and I'm talking, you know, where you can put a spirit level on them flat, this might not be the thing for you because, especially the 200 mil wheel, the curve is a bit more pronounced. The larger wheel may even be less so, but um, yeah, it's definitely not the flatness that say like a belt grinder can get you if you're trying to flat grind a knife. And so just be aware that every edge you put on is gonna have, and it'll be a matter of microns with just a micro bevel, but it's gonna have a slight concave to it, so a slight hollowness to it. Nothing that I would say is an issue. So your survival knives, you just put it a bit thicker. You know, there isn't anything that I've ever noticed affecting the performance, but if you're after the perfect flat, you may not get it with this. The perfect V, you may not get it with the Tormek, especially with the T4 and it's slightly smaller wheel. Another thing about the T4 is that this has the uh, basic stone and it has the Japanese water stone. The larger Tormex, which are the, of course the more expensive ones, you can get the diamond stone and the black stone for them. Um, I'm not sure if there's plans to release the diamond and the black stone for the T4. I think it would be very intelligent of them to do that because I think this is the one the hobbyists are going to buy to keep their knives sharp. This is almost a real competitor price-wise for a full-fledged KME system. It does different things to the KME system. It preferences obviously speed and preferences um, sort of ease, I guess, and uh, and time uh, over the KME. But um, yeah, and it's also probably a little bit more still capable of, of say, if you're an industrial scale knife sharpener or something, probably uh, it's a bit more virtuous for those people as well. But it'd be really intelligent of them, I think, to sell those other wheels for the in the 200 mil size too. So there is that as well. Tormek is also a powered system. And even though it's a g relatively gentle powered system, you need to be aware that any mistakes you make will be magnified by that lack of just your arm doing it. So you can mitigate this by having it so the stone moves by placing the rod in these holes away from the knife. Um, so that is where the, st the knife will be fixed along this way and the stone is moving away from the edge. So therefore any mistakes you're making are a little bit slower to absolutely ruin anything. Uh, when the, when the uh, stone is coming towards you, when you've got the setup up here, mistakes can creep up pretty quickly on you. So you just need to be aware of that as well. This is one that does require practice. I would say most of these systems require a good couple of dummy knives to get the handle of it um, before you, you know, put your good stuff in. This one probably more than most because there is that potential to, you know, put some put some smiles on the on the choils of your blades and all that sort of stuff. And I've done it, and I still do it every now and then by accident. Usually, it's when I haven't noticed my stone needs a refinish, but there's just that as well. And yeah, that's the only other thing. This stone, in terms of consumables, the Tormek's really good. There isn't a great deal you need to keep buying for it. Obviously, you need to keep water in there. You can keep the stropping paste coming from Tormek if you want. Otherwise, you can just go out and buy a bar of stropping compound, impregnate your wheel with that. It's totally fine. The wheels will eventually need replacing, and I'm talking over a few years probably. I'm about two years into this Tormek, and I've probably taken about a centimeter or so of distance of, of total space off of this. Uh, and it's usable still until it's, you know, much, much closer. You're gonna have to change your angles a bit, but then the angle finding tool does allow you to accommodate for right down until the wheel gets to 150 millimeters. So not a big deal, but that's somewhat of a consumable, I guess, is the stone. If you wanna get multiple stones, you're gonna have to disassemble, which isn't a hard thing to do, but the stones may be different, you know, within a couple of millimeters will be different sizes. So you'll need to do a bit of angle adjusting as well, which is fine, you'll do that with anything, but. Uh, in terms of fixing the angle, I would say this is probably still the easiest out of all because you don't need that angle cube or smartphone app or whatever. So that's the Tormek. Um, a little bit less forgiving, but very, very competent, very capable of doing uh, many knives within a day. So say if you just want to spend a day sharpening all your knives, you'll be able to do it quite easily with this. Whereas to get a knife where I like it on the Lansky or the KME, at least an hour usually. So it does all the goods from reprofiling to some decent level polishing. And I would say the eventual finish, like the eventual max sharpness you can get on the Tormek, 
as this current situation uh, without the Japanese stone, without any of the other stones, I'd say it gets to about 80% of maximum sharpness. So pretty happy with the Tormek all up. It's probably my favorite, to be honest, out of all the systems. I just enjoy using it and it's a, um, you know, it feels like a bit of a, um, a bit of a project, sort of a bit of a, you can experiment, you can move the steel around on the knife edge just a little bit easier and experiment with your edges, which is what I'm like, that's the kind of knife user I am. I like to sort of muck with stuff a little bit. So it's great for that. So that's the Tormek, probably my favorite. All right, the next one I'm gonna talk about is this guy, the WorkSharp Knife and Tool Sharpener. So this is a powered sharpening system that is really like a tiny little belt grinder. You see the little teeny tiny belts there? Now, there are other WorkSharps that are bigger or different to this one. This was kind of like the first one, I reckon, or the first you know, widely sold one. So this one is good for um, doing large tools to a pretty good edge very, very rapidly. Um, what you get with the workshop is the basic kit comes with the machine. It comes with this guide, which is a 20 degree guide. And then it comes with a 25 degree guide, which I don't use and I've put somewhere. So <laughs> can't really show you that, but it's this gray guide with the part that you slide the knife into is just a little bit different. So it comes with three different colors of belts uh, with the basic kit. So green, which is like a, I think a 50 grit or a, yeah, I think green is 50 or 70 grit. Really, really rough. Don't use those either. Uh, and then it comes with this, uh, I think, two, 200 grit belt, and then this blue polishing belt, which is like a 6,000 grit. So the jump seems really large, but remember, this is a powered system. This goes at really high RPM, so even the polishing belt will take some steel off. And sometimes, a lot of the time, actually, it's all you need. So the strengths of the workshop are you can rapidly do knives at a fairly safe fixed angle if you're using the guides. You can also use it to freehand and steer the, steer it around tool. So you can use this as a hand tool and bring it to a tool that is in a vise. So for example, if you want to sharp a, sharpen a large ax or a lawnmower blade or something like that, then this is a great tool to do it. Um, I found that with knives, uh, it gets, you know, the edge is probably about, I'd say 60% as good as, you know, if you're thinking of like the sharpest edge you can possibly imagine, uh, I would say it gets to about 60% in there. The large part of that is because these edges are micro convex. And I found that micro convex edges, they are um, very, very strong and they stay at a good working sharpness for a long, long time. However, they are hard to stay at that real bleeding edge sharpness because of their inherent roundness and their inclination to round over. Um, I just find that that crazy hair popping paper slicing sharpness goes the quickest out of all these. However, a knife will certainly still cut food and cut wood and cut all the other good stuff uh, with a workshop edge for a good long time. So it's certainly not the end of the world. The workshop's also probably the cheapest out of all these to get a full kit. Even considering the Lansky, my Lansky kit is kind of extensive at the minute, and I'll show you that next. Um, this one's probably the cheapest out of all of them because it's basically an all-in-one kit. Uh, in terms of consumables, the belts do go fairly often. Um, when I was using this a whole bunch, when this was like my main means of sharpening knives for my knife tests, I was probably going through a couple of workshop belts every week or so, because uh, they do smooth over, especially on the super steels and the high speed steels and things like that. Um, yeah, the grits wear out. It's a very thin little belt, like knife makers, knife making belts wear out quick enough. Like, so this is much smaller scale and it does actually do a fair bit of reprofiling to get whatever edge you've got into the 20 degree per side micro convex edge. So there is that. So consumables are a little higher than some of the others, um, but in general, you're pretty much good to go from the immediate. So let's look at it a bit closer. So this trigger here is a momentary on trigger and that's all this one has. I'm sure, I think some of them do have uh, fixed on triggers, but this one, you gotta hold it because as soon as you let go, as soon as you let go, it snaps off. So what it does is it pulls the belt around at a fair rate of knots and you put your knife in. And as long as you hug this guide with your knife, as in let the knife go all the way down to the bottom, you're gonna have a sharp 20 degree edge on either side. So, pocket knives, do I recommend the workshop? Well, 
Not particularly, to be honest. There is, like with every powered system, there is margins for error, and this one can be quite unforgiving to the tips of your knives, and also to the general straightness of your blades. I have wonkied up a fair few of my blades using the Workshop, and it's a, um, you know, it's not a pleasant thing to have to get fixed because um, a lost knife tip, you need something like a Tormek to go and put that back on or like, you know, pretty precise uh, stone sharpening set and stone sharpening skills for certain. So that's probably the main thing I wouldn't really recommend for your like pocket knives, for your, especially for your nice pocket knives. What this is great for is sharpening your big choppers. So your Artak 2s, your um, you know, Tarava Pukos, your axes and hatchets, those sorts of things, whether you use the guide or whether you just take it off and freehand, um, using the lighter two belts, you're gonna remove a little bit of steel um, in a pretty even way, as long as you've got good control. You can always keep the guides locked on and any knife up to about you know, a quarter of an inch thick is gonna fit into these fairly comfortably and fairly evenly. And then you just pull it through. So for your big knives, which you really don't wanna either dick around with on the KMEs or your Lansky systems, or even if even the Tormek, although it has a large knife guide, um, you know, the really big stuff can often be pretty overwhelming to sort of manage all of it. So this is great for your big knives. If you're a big knife guy, a workshop style model is a great idea. Um, machetes, all that sort of stuff. Lawnmower blades, for more of a home maintenance sense. Your lawnmower blades, your um, edge trimmer blades, all that sort of stuff. You can put decent convex edges, which is all those kind of tools you really need uh, on with a workshop, especially with your coarser green belts, which as I said, I don't really use, but um, certainly is there. So this is a great tool for more like your, your house, your garden tools, you can shove, shove, get your shovels, sharpen the edges of your shovels with this. Uh, my Cold Steel Special Forces shovel has micro convex chisel edges all the way around and it's a really, really good tool for that sort of stuff. Your knives, probably less great. Um, it's, it's really well priced, but unless you've got that real good control, then you're gonna have maybe a couple, couple few less tips in your collection, which isn't great. Another thing is, from a clearance point of view, if your knives don't have sharpening choils, you can often get hung up from where the knife begins on this plastic edge of this guard here, which isn't great either. So yeah, the workshop's probably not the one tool option that say the Tormek is, but then it's about a fifth of the price for a full system. So it's definitely gonna do a lot of your sharpening if you have edges in your house, but for the pocket knife guy, I wouldn't recommend this particular workshop model, having used it for, what, a few years now. So next is the Lansky system. So the Lansky system is a very primitive version of like the KME or the Wicked Edge. Well, not primitive, but just basic. Uh, you've got four variable angles you can start with. Of course, these will all need to be verified by an angle cube or an angle app on your phone or something else, because depending on how tall the blade face is, this is gonna be slightly different angled. So that's just something to remember, but you generally, if you're after a delicate sized blade and you put your locket somewhere into the middle of the clamps, it's gonna be pretty much on the money. It's just with your larger stuff or your smaller stuff. Uh, you might have to just double check if you are after an actual stated angle, so to speak. So using it right now, the flaws to me are sort of somewhat apparent because this thing's worn out, like it is. It's worn out pretty much, um, almost entirely. Largely, it's because the rubber that holds the, the knife in begins to degrade. As the knife gets moved around during sharpening or like just the, the application of the rods, the jaws here aren't as um, sort of, they aren't as well made as the KMEs. And you know, this is a much, much cheaper tool. It's just a piece of rubber that holds the knife in. Um, the good news is you can pretty much do most of what you can do with a KME on this. Even if these angles aren't sorting you out, then you can just usually extend or you know invert the knife in the in the jaws and so have more or less of it exposed, and that'll help you with edges as well. What you basically do is you choose your angle and you wear away at your edge like so. And as long as you keep the same pressure, there is a little bit of give in the holes. As long as you keep it down on the blade, that angle is gonna stay the same. So it is definitely a completely capable fixed angle system. What you need to know though, is that the basic Lanskys come with a few different stones, but to get the most out of the Lansky system, 
you got to start spending just a little tiny bit. There is a whole bunch of different stones you can get. I have found that the diamond ones are the most essential uh, because actually, especially when you're looking at smaller surfaces like this, you want to be removing as much material as you possibly can. So the ceramic stones are fine. The Arkansas stone is fine for like your carbon steels and whatnot, but the diamond stones, which is, you know, this one, this one, this one, these are the ones that are actually going to remove the material for you at a good rate of knots. And when you're using the Lansky, this is definitely the slowest of all these systems. When you're using the Lansky, time can sometimes really get away from you. And so then the price of the system isn't any longer the selling point of it because these are all, you know, 15 to $20 each. Um, there's probably an extra sort of 60 or $70 worth of stones here. Um, especially given, unless you go straight out and buy the, the diamond set, you're still gonna wanna get a couple of these really smooth ceramic stones to do your sort of edge finishing and your polishing. So this is 1,000, this is 2,000. And this is what can get you sort of your mirror edges on using the Lansky. And you can get a mirror edge with a Lansky, even on the really sort of high-end steels. It just takes a whole lot longer. A great starting point in fixed angle sharpening, for sure. Uh, you can pretty much get on board for, you know, 70, 80 Australian dollars, uh, maybe a hundred or so if you want to get the diamond kit, and then just pick up whatever other stones you need. I've had a couple of really generous viewers send me their stones, like these serration stones here, and um, a couple of the Arkansas stones, and this sort of um, rounded stone for um, recurves and such. Um, yeah, it's, it's a competent system. It's just, um, compared to the KME and compared to the others, it just takes the most time and it is a bit of a drag to use compared to what you can get for more money. But if you are money limited and you want that polished edge, you can most certainly get it with the Lansky. Don't let anyone tell you any otherwise. You just need to do it for longer and that's all there is to it. It's totally fine. There is no shame in having this as your only sharpening system for knives. In fact, if you have pocket knives, you would do better having this Lansky system than having the Workshop system because while this is more versatile for other tools, this is going to do your pocket knives properly in terms of the edges that you probably want as a pocket knife guy. So yeah, no shame at all in the humble Lansky system. Certainly still packs a punch, just takes a little while longer to get there. All right, the next one we'll cover is this, the KME system. So the KME is one of the sort of, there's a bit of a trinity of the three. There's the Wicked Edge, there's the KME, and then there's the Viper Sharp, I think. There might be another, a couple of other ones too. These are the ones that are like the Lanskys, but much more precise and also much more expensive. So the same basic principles apply though. Having a rod, having a clamp that holds a knife in place, and choosing your angle by sliding up and down. This allows for much more precision though, and the stones are much higher quality and they are larger, so it does everything a little bit quicker and a little bit more steady. Uh, the general quality of the piece is apparent. It comes in this nice case. It comes with, well, my system came with the diamond stone, so this is a diamond based. You can get ceramic based if you do like ceramic more. Diamonds, I would suggest, are best for the average user because they do it a bit quicker and they do do it quite neat, especially when you get up to your extra fine 1500 grit. So the KME comes with a, I think the basic kit comes with a course, so an extra course, a course, um, the extra course is in there now, uh, 140 grit. So it comes with 140, 300, 600, and 1500. You can, and I recommend, getting the beast stone as well, which is 50 grit. If you're working with the super steels, the 50 grit will take off the stuff, you know, noticeably quicker, and then you neaten it up with the 140. You can also get a 100, which I would probably recommend as well, because if you're, after, if you're chasing the mirror, and this is what this kit's for, the people chasing the mirror finish or the really accurate finish, then you wanna have enough increments that your scratches are getting um, you know, easily overtaken by the next set of scratches on the surface of the knife. So, the KME, you grab your knife, you open the jaws by pushing this spring at the back, you let it take the knife into the jaws, you straighten things up, putting it about as in the center of the blade as you can. And then you get your angle. Now again, with the same with the Lansky, although there's, there is even numbers on the side here, and what I've done is I've turned this upside down because you can get closer to the edge in lower angles. I like my lower angles, but you can turn this back up the right way or whatever. So you unscrew this 
at the back, there's a screw there. And then you can slide this up or down and effectively choose your angle. However, I recommend getting for your phone a an app or something that can sit on the back here and make sure you're actually getting your angles. They're generally, as I said, about right with a delicate sized knife, but if you're getting a longer blade or a shorter blade, this is gonna be out a bit further. And so the angle has changed just a tiny little bit. So what we've got here is a, that's probably sitting at about 17. I'll just stir it up just a little tiny bit. So, again, you're just moving up and down. Using that diamond stone, just to start with reprofiling the edge, and then eventually you're gonna bring the edge to a nice polish. And that's the best thing about the KME, the polishing. So KME sells these micron films, which sit on glass plates that, in conjunction with the oils, will bring your knife up to a mirror polish. And you can see numerous videos of mine where I mirror polish the edges. And mirror polished edges on most steels do seem to A, look nicer and B, last longer. Some of your high speed steels stool, uh, will do better with a uh, coarse finish. So say stopping at 600 grit or 1500 grit maybe, but usually 600. So say your Rex 121s, your M4s, your um, CPM 125Vs, those crazy steels, K390, they'll cut at least rope longer using the coarse edge. But KME is really the knife nerd sharpener. And these sorts are the ones chasing that really flash looking mirror finish for the Instagram or whatever, or just for your own admiration. Nothing wrong with that. You see though the grits that you can get up to using these films. 160,000 grit, that's like, that is prop that's what you'd make a house mirror with, you know, almost, it's crazy. So really, really well, um, you know, really well um, done finishes are possible with the KME for sure. It's rather expensive. This was in an act of insane generosity sent to me by Nick Shabazz for me to keep doing my edge testing and whatnot with. And it's, I am a very lucky person for that. Like, this is a lot of money though. So this is about, for the kit that I've got here is probably getting towards about 350 to 400 US dollars. Um, for the, um, the films and stuff as well. The base, everything. A pretty basic KME set, I think, so, you know, low 200s, early 200s, maybe high 100s. But if you want it to do the things that you want the KME to do, which is your mirror edges, your variable grits, all that sort of stuff, because you're a knife nerd and you want the nerdiest knife you can get, that's me, then yeah, you're gonna wanna invest just a little bit more. In terms of consumables, um, the stones will last you a fair while, the diamond stones, unless you push really hard on them and wear those diamonds off. Um, but even still, I think we all do that at first when we get one of these kits, and mine is completely fine still. My beast still cuts, my all mine still cut really, really nicely. Um, the films, I found myself going through them fairly quickly. That's probably just me overdoing it and changing them too quickly, but as I've learnt the system, I have gone through probably more films than I should have. So I am um, in the process of ordering some more now. Uh, one tricky thing with these for Australia, they don't seem to have a particularly robust uh, dealer network in Australia. So you do need to buy them maybe from KME themselves, which is gonna attract a pretty heavy shipping price. So that's one other thing that I would point out. These, are the, these kind of systems are the ones for the real nerds, like the ones that really love their, um, they love knowing what knife angles they have and they love knowing you know, uh, what grit finish it is and all that sort of good stuff. You can really enjoy sharpening with these. A good sharpening session will take about an hour or so from blunt to mirror polished, but if you're the type of person that doesn't sound like a chore to, then this is definitely a system for you. I haven't used any of the other ones that are comparable, the Viper or the Wicked Edge or any of those ones. I'm sure they're all very, very good in their own ways. However, the KME is excellent and it's so different from the Tormek and I like it almost as much as the Tormek. Um, because sometimes you just want to spend a night with a glass of wine or a glass of scotch and just sharpen a few knives and get that mirror on them and there's that satisfaction of having, seeing the reflections in your edge that is you know, quite, you know, quite remarkable. So I would definitely suggest if you have the money and you are really into your edges, then the KME is a, almost a must or a similar system to this is a must. The Lansky can do it, but the larger stones, the increased precision, just the extra robustness of it, uh, uh, once you get it, it'll make sense. I was thinking myself, oh, the Lansky's fine, I can just make do with that, it does technically the same thing. It does, but 
this does it so much better and it is, it's hard to argue with it uh, once you've actually got one in hand. So I'd certainly recommend wholeheartedly the KME, easily my second favorite, if not tied with the Tormek. They both just do such different things. So yeah, that's the KME system. Um, the best results of all of them. So you'll be able to get 100% edges. So you'll be able to get the sharpest possible edges. High degree of variability. Some negatives, I would like to see some proper pen knife um, jaws. So jaws that were narrower, and I know logistically it's hard, um, well not logistically, but um, mechanically it's hard to have something that applies even grip and holds even a flat grind knife evenly in place, um, whilst also maintaining um, you know, a lower angle. I would like to see them try, maybe just extend them a little bit so you could get those really high angles. It does seem about 15 or so with the blade out is about the limit of this KME in this current setup, and that's with this lowered. That's just my experience. You may be able to do better, and that's totally cool, but I'd love to see that from the KME. The Tormek, you can do whatever angle you can bloody imagine, and that's what, probably what I like the most about the Tormek, even still. Lastly, the bench stones. That's right, I got bench stones. Um, bench stones are the hardest one to use of all. So some people have learnt their whole lives and they'll usually tell you, <laughs> how, how do you know if someone can stone sharpen? Don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> it's pretty good, um, like a, one of those types of jokes. But yeah, it's a, yeah, to be honest, it's a skill to be proud of as well. So um, being able to stone sharpen is a pretty cool thing to be able to do. Um, my grandpa gave me these while he left, I ended up getting these when he passed away. And um, he had his king stone here, and then he had some much smaller stones because he used to sharpen small chisels to uh, make violins with. So uh, there you go. But a stone you can sharpen anything with, as long as you've got the skill and as long as you're happy to have some patience and learn consistency because that's the main thing. Um, so my kit, my stone sharpening kit is two best of brand stones, one at 700 grit and one at 1000 grit. And then I have a king stone, which was my grandpa's at 4,000 grit. And then I have a handmade strop that I made years ago that still works pretty good. I just uh, use different compounds on it. Uh, compounds, again, uh, all different sorts. They'll eventually, they roughly translate into grit finishes. Generally, they're usually about, you know, between 3,000 and you know, 200,000, depending on if it's a spray or whatever, if it's a stick. There's a whole, uh, you could do videos and videos on stone sharpening. And I recommend you check out Michael Christie, Weed a fan. Big brown guy. Those guys know about this stuff. All I'm sort of talking about is in comparison to the other sharpening methods. And results wise, probably equal to the KME. If not, some dudes will be able to get better than the KME with stones. It's all about the skill. Me, I'm very much a C student. I can probably match my work sharp edges using the stones. Um, but that's probably, I just haven't sunk enough time into it to be able to say I'm excellent at it yet. Uh, in terms of cost, it's not the cheapest. If you want the good stones that are going to um, last and that are going to cut well and they're not going to bind up and all that sort of good stuff, you're generally looking at about at least $60, $70 per stone in Australia, probably $40 or $50 in America. Um, my best of stones were about $80 bucks each. Um, these king stones are probably about $110 or so. Generally, you find the finer grits are better. Yeah, from a hardware store, you can get a combination 200, 700 stone. That'll get you started, but if you want those finishes, if you're talking, I'm a knife nerd, I want stratospheric finishes, you're gonna have to spend money. Um, and it, especially when it comes to sharpening um, high speed steels and things like that, the water stones, they're probably not gonna do as much for you as you'd perhaps want from you know this kind of system. You're gonna to wanna to go and get some diamond abrasives, so some diamond plates. And you know, they're, all sorts of folks make them. They're not hard to find, but you just want a bit of variation in your kit. So I would say the overall outlay, I mean, I would argue, I don't know, Sean, if you're watching, I would say, you know, if you're, um, say, a big brown guy, he would have spent, you know, a thousand on all your stones. It's to, to be an enthusiast of this type of sharpening, like anything else, you need to lay the money down. But you can get good, decent edges for, you know, probably 100, 120 bucks worth of stones, I suppose. You can make your strops, no problems at all. Uh, but yeah, compounds, all that sort of thing are consumables too. So it's not the, you often think, oh, the most rustic is the cheapest. It's really not if you're talking about knife nerd edges. It's really not. So it's just what I found. But um, yeah, as I say, there's the satisfaction of learning a proper skill. And also the eventual finishes you can get are great. 
Uh, one thing you do need to know is that the most common edge for an amateur stone sharpener is going to be a convex edge because that is just the way, you know, less strict movement goes. Some people love the convex edges. Look at Martin over at Dutch Butchcraft. He loves his um, convex edges. He shines everything up. Convex is on purpose. No problems at all. Uh, it's just a matter of, um, you're not going to start getting your real precise edges unless you've got either a scanty grind that you can hug the stone with properly, or if you've got that sureness of hand that you only really see in the really deft sharpeners. As I said, check out Weeder Fan, Michael Christie, Big Brown Guy. Those guys will hold the stone in one hand and sharpen and get amazing results that you would that would rival if not beat a KME system. So it's just a matter of inputting the energy and the time, building up that muscle memory, and you'll be great. So yeah, I, as I said, I'm not an expert on this stuff. That's just my thoughts on the five different sharpening systems that I have. Um, as I said, the Tormek is probably my favorite. I feel like a real tinkerer when I use my Tormek. I feel it's got a whole bunch of versatility and um, it's just the most fun for me. And I like the quick results it gives you and also the, um, the way you can really dial it in to be nice and precise and do your crazy angles and that sort of stuff. I'd really recommend the KME for any real knife guys though because you're probably happy to fuss a bit more over your knives and you may be um, really chasing that mirror polish. Uh, KME's Wicked Edge type systems, they're easy enough to pick up as in it's reading the manual and then just doing it and you'll get, I was on mirror polished edges straight away so um, really really cool like that. The Lansky, there is nothing wrong with your Lansky at all. It's a great entry level system. If you want to see what maybe the KMEs will do for you, if you're happy to spend that extra, you know, triple the price or whatever it is, then awesome. Start with the Lansky, use it for six months, see if you really like that. Workshop, mainly for your overall edge tools around your house, I would suggest. Pocket knives, just that air of danger with the tips and just with, you can strip out that steel pretty darn quickly as well. Great for your heavy choppers, great for your lawnmower blades, great for your axes, freehanding stuff. Really, really cool, but for your knives, probably the least recommended, I would suggest. For like your nice pocket knives if you're a knife guy. And then yeah, bench tones. Well, um, if you are happy to learn a skill and happy to sink some money in, which you will need to do, then I think bench tones may be the most satisfying because you can get edges that are just crazy as long as you've chosen your materials and your stones right and you've you know, and you've learned your little trade so it's that too so all five have some merit uh, i think i hope this has been of some use to you um, watching seeing all the different systems and uh, i thank you all so very much for watching and i'll see you all in the next video goodbye